Hello, my name is Crystal Erickson, and I'm a thoracic surgeon with the University of Colorado Health System. This 8 and 8 presentation will review the current application, research, and clinical limitations of artificial intelligence and early radiographic detection and diagnosis of lung cancer. I have no disclosures, but I do have one disclaimer, and that is I am a thoracic surgeon with no background in software engineering. Operating my smartphone is challenge enough. Everything presented here is from my own review of some very interesting papers, which I have cited throughout the presentation, and which I encourage you to look up if you would like more in-depth information on the application of AI in the field of radiology. The role for AI in radiology and oncology is rapidly evolving. The interest in integrating AI is driven by several factors. First, we know that early detection of lung cancer saves lives. Approximately one-third of all chest CTs contain at least one lung nodule. Given the volume of CT scans performed in the United States, this can add up to over one and a half million nodules to analyze per year. The vast majority of these will be benign, but it is important to accurately identify and subsequently report and track those that are malignant. The future of AI is focused on model building for cancer prognosis, molecular profiling, and to guide patient-directed therapy. Starting in the 1980s, one of the earliest applications of AI was computer-aided detection of lung nodules on chest imaging. These software programs rely on semantic features, which are the qualitative morphologic features we commonly use to identify a malignant nodule. Things like size, border, internal appearance, and surrounding lung parenchyma. CAD is most commonly used as a second reader to improve efficiency and detecting nodules or to alert a radiologist of an abnormal scan. CAD programs are generally better at detecting solid nodules over part solid or ground glass lesions, and false positives can occur from normal findings. Most commercially available programs today demonstrate around a 95% sensitivity for nodule detection on CT, with less than one false positive per scan. Sensitivity for detection of clinically relevant nodules can be increased by gating for size. The use of AI can significantly reduce image review times, leading to more efficient radiology workflows, and several studies have demonstrated that review by a radiologist using AI as a second reader is superior at detecting clinically relevant nodules compared to either modality used alone. With the advent of radiomics in the early 2000s, CAD moved from detection to diagnosis. Radiomics combines the fields of radiology and oncology to produce models that can be used for diagnosis and prognosis. Radiomics recognizes that there is much more information contained within an image than what can be perceived by the human eye. It is quantitative image analysis, looking at features such as texture or the heterogeneity among pixels within an image. The fundamental steps of this process are outlined here. Similar to CAD for nodule detection, this higher level analysis is performed by software, so it does not require purchase of special machines or use of novel imaging techniques. It uses what is already standard in clinical practice today. The ROI, or region of interest, in this case a lung nodule, can be manually identified by a radiologist, or more commonly, is machine identified through a process of automated learning. Segmentation is analogous to a pathologist reviewing slides. However, radiomics takes advantage of the entire scan, analyzing all of the pixels within an image, including the nodule and the surrounding lung parenchyma, it is not restricted to a small amount of tissue on a slide. Radiomics then uses algorithms to combine the information obtained from the imaging with clinical and pathologic data to develop models, which can be used to predict histology, molecular mutations, tumor behavior, and tumor response to treatment. AI has evolved from manually programmed image analysis to machine-driven automated learning to the current field of research, deep learning neural networks. These programs self-determine which data to extract from an image without human supervision through a process of representation learning. 
Large data sets allow for the development of many layers of neural networks, mimicking the way the human brain processes information. Current applications of deep learning involve the ability to manipulate images to improve nodule detection through vessel suppression on CT imaging or with rib suppression on chest radiographs. This avoids higher radiation doses when performed at the level of the x-ray machine. These programs can also reduce motion and streak artifact and improve reconstruction to allow for nodule detection even with ultra-low dose CT scans. Deep learning algorithms exceed the performance of humans and human-created models in longitudinally tracking subtle change in ground glass lesions. These models have shown less variation in volume measurement between scans compared to measurements taken by humans, enabling recognition of progression that is otherwise difficult to detect. The application of deep learning networks in the field of research goes much further. When combined with genomics, proteomics, and risk prediction models, the hope is that the future of AI can offer improved prognostication and therapeutic planning. Models have been developed using the NLST data to predict development of lung cancer within one to two years based on analysis of indeterminate nodules at the baseline scan. Other models have been built to predict risk of disease recurrence or development of distant metastases, to determine pathologic response after neoadjuvant treatment, or to predict the durability of response to SBRT. There is a wide gap between performance of AI in the research environment and actual clinical practice. AI algorithms require a vast amount of data for accurate training and model building. Without that, the model will be built with limited scope and utility and cannot reliably be applied to different patient populations and institutions. For instance, there are research models that are highly sensitive at distinguishing a lung adenocarcinoma from a squamous cell cancer, but these same programs will miss the metastat metastatic adrenal nodule or the enlarged hilar node or the concurrent aortic aneurysm. Another major limitation, especially pertinent to deep learning methods, is that these systems are truly a black box. There is an inherent lack of transparency because we do not understand and cannot explain or replicate how these networks perform their analysis and reach their conclusions. This subsequently leads to difficulty obtaining regulatory approval and ultimately leads to the question of who is liable for the decisions made by AI. For these reasons, AI systems are mostly playing roles as assistants in clinical practice today, with humans making the final decision. However, the future of AI is rapidly evolving, and the performance of these programs in the research setting is quite impressive. Thank you.